Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. The reason I'm doing this today is because I have been diagnosed with a brain tumour um, last week. Apparently brain tumours are very rare and there's only like 1% of the nation what suffers with brain tumours. Uh, first of all, I want to talk to you about my journey, my signs, my symptoms, what was happening to me. Then I'm going to talk to you about the MRI itself, the scan, and then I'm going to talk to you about the procedures, what have been offered to me. Um, so yeah, first of all, I would say to you, um, I went to the doctors about 12 years ago regarding falling over, tripping, falling, walking around drunk, stumbling, stumbling into things, my balance was shocking, it's, it's been shocking for years, um, and yet I thought it might have been because I had collapsed arches, um, the doctor was meant to refer me to the chiropodist, um, I never got a phone call, I never got a letter in the post saying that they've, they've received the referral, nothing. I went back over a couple of times regarding my balance and my feet. Um, I didn't get anywhere. Uh, then I went back um, with significant memory loss. Um, so yeah, it was, it was so concerning, my memory loss. I have got no recognition of areas or anything like that. Um, I can go to somewhere 100 times and still not know how to get there. My memory is horrific. It's terrible. Um, recognize, recognizing faces and stuff like that isn't good. Um, and yeah, I actually was so concerned um, I thought I had vascular dementia. I've been at the doctors for about 10 years, on and off, on and off, on and off. I just felt like the doctor didn't believe me, the doctor dismissed me, the doctor didn't listen to me, they weren't very helpful. Um, and yeah, they were just not, not good. It was not good enough. Um, and then... I went back and forth to the doctors for about 10 years with low mood, depression, anxiety, um, not feeling good within myself, not feeling myself, not being right. Uh, the only way I can describe it is I went from a lovely, confident, outgoing, go-lucky girl, so beautiful, loved the world, loved everyone in it, to this now. This is so not me. I feel like my body's just been took over and invaded by somebody else. Um, I went to the doctor constantly breaking down, feeling se severely anxious, very depressed, very low mood, not being able to cope proper. And they, all they done, they didn't refer, they didn't, they didn't offer me any form of medication. They just offered me a, a self-help um, referral which is a telephone call from um, the self-help group um, and they can't diagnose brain tumours or any medical conditions and I just thought to myself I'm not happy and no I don't want to be referred to you know what I mean the doctors don't even understand I don't even understand myself at times I don't know what you know what I mean um, and yeah so I didn't go ahead with that. Uh, then I went back to the doctors regarding um, an autoimmune disease I had, um, which was like complantus. Um, and yeah, my skin was breaking out in these, it's it's like, it, apparently it comes from the ex, my family, but it's very, very severe and it's an autoimmune disease. Um, I eat well. Um, I look after myself uh, and yeah I didn't understand why I had it there was nothing wrong with me like in the way you know other than signs and symptoms and deterioration due to this ch tumour um, and yeah the doctors give me 
oral steroids, topical cream. I had it, I had had it for about two years and then it went away for about five years and then boom it was back again during covid um so the doctors just give me topical cream um it stayed with me for about a year and a half uh and then it's it's gone now finally um not to say it won't come back because it is an autoimmune disease unfortunately then I went back to the doctors with my ear, earring problems, uh, about 18 months ago. Um, I had problems with my left ear. I felt like I had a shield over my ear, like I had some form of blockage. Me, my ear, I just felt like there was, I had something over my ear, which was preventing me from not hearing properly. Um, so the doctors just said to me, um, put olive oil down your ear. I was told by about four different doctors to put olive oil down my ear. Um, I've just got a blockage of wax. This was during COVID, so they just give me face to um, appointments over the phone, um, and they were just telling me to keep putting olive oil down my ears. And so many months later, I contacted them back. It weren't working. I'd had enough. Um, I was buying over-the-counter medication. It didn't work. Then they offered me like a steroid nasal spray. Um, they said it might have a blockage. So I'm using the spray. The spray's not working. So I've contacted the doctors back. Um, they got me in. They actually seen me. Um, they, look, I just had a little bit of wax down them. Um, they sent me to spec savers for an earring test. Um, they tested my earring and it come back. There was nothing wrong with my ears. Um, and I've been like this for about 18 months now with like a shield over that left ear. But my tumour is where, where my, at the, I think it's at the back of my ear, somewhere the tumour. Uh, so yeah. And then there's visual signs as well, where I get floaters coming at me every day, like speckles flying at me. Um, I might see the odd dragonfly fly past and think to myself, wow, have I just seen a dragonfly fly past me? No, I've not, because there's nothing in my house <laughs> of a dragonfly. It's just me seeing things. And the odd time it has happened, and it's so scary when it does, it's horrific. I wouldn't wish it on anyone what happens. Um, my eyes, it's happened to me a handful of times and it's like where I can only see where your cornea is, your pupil is. I can see like a pinprick through the middle part of the cornea. Everything else is black. All the surrounding areas are black and it's a blur and I can only see like a little pinprick from the, um, the pupil and it's horrific. It lasts for about 20 minutes and my vision fluctuates. It's back to normal and it's awful. Went to the opticians. The optician couldn't find anything wrong with me. Um, so, yeah. And then my sister was diagnosed with MS recently. So I've gone back into the doctors. I've broke down. Um you know, I've had loss of power in my right arm. My hands kept seizing up. Um, you know, I was, it was so emotional. I was a wreck. And then the doctor listened to me. The doctor referred me for an MRI scan. Um, he knew the medical history. So, you know, everything's there in black and white. Um, he referred me for the scan. Had the MRI scan done. They put me in a big machine which was really noisy, it banged, it, it, oh, it was awful. They put like a TV screen in front of me and put a pair of earphones on me. Um, I was in there for a good hour. Then they took me out of the machine, they hooked me up to an IV drip, they put me back in the machine. And apparently the, the liquid, what they've been putting through me through the drip, is supposed to light the brain up so they can get a better intake of everything what's happening within the brain so yeah um 
all in all, I was in the MRI scanner for about two and a half hours, having PEP scans done and all other sequence scans done. Um, I was sent home then after having the scan done. As soon as I got home, I received a call from the hospital saying um, I'd been rushed through on an urgent um, transferal. Um, the app detected something on the scan. Um, and they was having an MDT meeting, 15 specialists from different departments were having a meeting about me and what, what had been found um, on the x-rays, on the scans uh, the following day and then they got me in then to see the neurosurgeon um, who talked to me then, she went in, in to detail about what they found she confirmed it was a tumor she confirmed it was small it was on the left part of my brain they believe it's been with me for a long time but it's deeply rooted into the brain um and they wanted to remove the tumor um she's unsure how much of the tumor she can take away because she believes it's deeply rooted in and there's a couple of gray areas as well uh if she can remove it all during the time of surgery she will do but if not she's hoping for 95 percent to remove 95 percent and then once i've had um procedure done they'll send the tumor away to be tested um so yeah I'll speak to you first about the treatments they offered me uh, and then I'll talk to you then about the tests. Um, so they offered me to be put to sleep during surgery and this was a no-go for me. Um, my, my, my best friend's son has got a tumour as well. His tumour is big, it's, in the, it's at the back of his head. It was like eight centimetres big um they put him to sleep um unfortunately he did get a infection um and he is now paralyzed and he's on a vent machine and this was not an option what i was willing to take because i know the chances are high as well of them causing permanent damage to you so i knew that that was not an option what i wanted um, they offered me then the preferred method, which is to sedate me um, and do open brain surgery. Heavily sedate me during the un awkward, the, the traumatic part, which will be going into the skull. So, and then to bring me back round during the procedure, test my functions, my speech, my get me to move my feet, my hands, talk to me. I will have the psychiatrist with me and the speech therapist there talking to me. Um, this is to avoid um, risk of me needing rehabilitation and speech therapy. The chance is still there that I may need speech therapy after and some form of rehabilitation, but it lessens the chances by 1%. Um, and then they offered me another um, thingy where they can go into the skull, they'd take a biopsy. Um, but in order to do this, they could miss areas within the tumour because they only take the outside layer of the tumour. They don't go into the tumour where it could be, it could have progressed and it could be aggressive. Um, they can miss certain things within the tumour doing the biopsy that way and offering me some form of radiotherapy treatment to shrink it uh, or chemo if it was cancer what they detected however you know there's a good possibility that they might not pick everything up what's vital what they need to pick up um so i thought i don't want that i'm going with the open brain surgery so i'm scheduled now for my operation next week so all being well I'm staying positive, I'm having faith and if I don't have this I'm more than likely going to die anyway so 
you know, I've, I've, I'm, I'm going to have this. I'm having it done and I'm just going to stay positive and strong and have faith, I'm, you know. Um, the doctor did say to me, my chances, um, if I don't have the surgery, um, she says it's already progressed now to the stage where it's visually causing you so much effects now. Um, you know, it'll just progress. She's seen it too many times where people have come in too late and they've been unable to do anything for them. She said to me, you'll start fitting, you'll black out, you could go blind, um, you can lose your hearing, you can lose your, your voice, loss of breath and loss of life, and it can turn cancerous at any given time. So they want to deal with it now because they believe on the scan it it's possibly a primary tumour and it is benign, hopefully, or being well, it's just benign. But like I say, the thing what concerns me are the grey areas. So they want to do it sooner rather than later. So I'm scheduled in next week now to have my surgery. And what I'm going to do is I will check in with you guys after my surgery, after I've recovered, and hopefully I will still be intact. I won't need rehabilitation or speech therapy or anything like that. I'm hoping that I'll be okay. Um... And yeah, there is a 1% chance as well that I could have a bleed, get infection or swelling. So hopefully this isn't going to happen, hopefully. Um, but I need the treatment doing. If I don't have the treatment, my quality of life. Wow. Well, I'm not willing to take that chance on what if, what if, what if. I'm doing it. Uh, I have ordered myself as well some CBD oil because um, I know that they've trialled this in several parts of the world and the results they get regarding shrinking tumours and stuff like that and they give it to cancer patients um, and the results they've had are quite good, I believe. So what I've read on the internet, but you know, you can't always believe what you read on the internet, can you? So, uh, yeah, I've got the oil from a um, a well-branded, well-established company. So, hopefully, yeah, and it's got no THC in it or no harmful chemicals. It should be okay. Um, but do your research, guys, as well, if you are planning on doing anything like that. Um, and my prayers are with everyone what's going through what I'm going through right now treatment, surgery and I wish you all lots of luck and best wishes and stay positive, have faith and just keep praying hopefully I will see you guys in a couple of weeks time Take care.